Okay, here's part two of simple linear regression in R. Here we're going, to, we looked at this scatter plot, we, we saw this correlation coefficient, and we determined that these, um, this data is going to be well approximated with a straight line. Okay, so we choose to use simple linear regression. This is kind of the go to um, method in this scenario. So we need to get the equation of this line. So I keep drawing this line in blue um, until I kind of pin it down and put it in the form of y equals mx plus b. It's just kind of an idea. So I need to get I need to get this with numbers in it, right? So except we don't use y equals mx plus b, typically we use y hat equals b0, that's the y-intercept, plus b1 that's the slope times x and we've already discussed in the last video that x is the independent feature it's the one we want to use to predict y and the y is the dependent feature in this case it's also our target right so let's get the b0 and b1 in this in this um, example. All right, we already know that y is rent because that's what we want to predict, and that x is size. Okay, when we have once we have all this, we could put it all together. All right, so how do we get the equation of this line? So there is a um, method that gets uh, th that this LM function LM stands for linear model and what you need to specify is first the dependent variable the target tilt the independent variables in this case only one so we only place one so this was y tilled x so whatever your y is what tilled whatever your x is comma what data frame does, does the data come from? Rent. If you hit enter here, you're going to get a lot of output. So let's typically it's nice to assign this to a name. So I'm going to call this M1. Hit enter, nothing happens, but M1 is there. So let's look at M1. You could just type M1. And you get a little bit of output here. Right? You get the coefficients, and those were the that's the B0. And the B1. There's a much, a, a much more kind of uh, comprehensive output you can get by using the summary function. So get the summary of M1. Let me just scroll down so we can see all the output we get here. I'm on big font, so so we see that this is the call we made. Here are the residuals, and we discussed residuals in class, so you can kind of piece those together the minimum, the maximum, and so forth. Um, here are the coefficients, so the intercept and size. So intercept is B0 for us, and the slope is B1. And that's the actual numbers for these guys. Okay. On top of that, there's other things we talked about in class. Adjusted R-square. <coughs> R square, which also goes under multiple R square, and uh, we may or may not have discussed the overall F test here and the individual T tests. Okay, so well, what I want out of this though is to pull out these coefficients and put them in the form of an equation. So let's just write it here: y hat equals 201. Let's just round to two decimal places, 0.38, plus 1.06 times x. And on top of that, I could replace y and x here with size and rent for y. Okay, and if you do that, here, if you do that, you'll get the, you'll, you'll have now put the equation of the simple, you'll, put, you'll have put the simple linear 
linear regression equation in a, in a structured form. And then I could use this to make predictions. Okay, so first thing I want to do, maybe I could um, put the line that I just got on top of this so we can visually see it, how it, how it relates to those points. Um, we would assume that it would slice through all those points. So we use AB line, and you could simply do it like this, and it'll add, I'll add this line, okay? So it's basically a straight line. Um, but we can change its color. I think color two is red, but you can also say red like this, I think. LTY controls the type of line, so type two has kind of dots in it or breaks in it and you can control the thickness of the line so one is default so three would be kind of thicker let's go with two let's do this we go here and we see yes in fact there is our line that we just wrote down before the with this intercept and this slope okay so you see that this intercept is the this actually is not zero, 0, here. But if you were to continue this axis, this line would cross the y-axis at 201. And the slope of this line is 1.063. Rise 1.063, run 1. Rise over run, rise over run, right? OK, I'll leave the interpretation of these two for you to think about, along with what we discussed in class. All right. Um, and finally, perhaps we can um, make a prediction. So we have our equation and we've abstracted and now we can generalize using our equation. All right. So let's make a prediction. Let's see how much a, an ap apartment that's a thousand square feet is predicted to rent for using what we learned from this data. Um, so first I'll write rent hat so the hat member means predicted. So predicted rent equals 201. Let me just be brief here. Plus 1.06 times, I said 1,000 square feet, right? So 1,000. So I just plug in 1,000 there, and I get a prediction for rent. Okay. And so the one way we could do that is to use the predict function. This goes along with the LM. So we're going to use model M1, and we're going to predict. So I, second argument, you have to put in a data frame. The size of this apartment, so I have to type the name of the x uh, variable here, the independent variable, equals, and we want to check for 1,000 square feet. So close, close, predict. So. So a thousand square foot apartment is predicted to sell for, the, uh, to rent for this much. Okay, and we can also get what's called the prediction interval, which is a little more sophisticated, because instead of just giving us um, the one point estimate of what an apartment that's a thousand square feet is going to rent for, it'll give us an interval with a confidence level. So the default is ninety five percent confidence. So we can specify, give me a prediction interval. So you see we get the same value we got up here, except we get a lower bound and an upper bound. And this, by default, is 95%. So the 95% prediction interval for a 1,000 square foot apartment is that it's going to rent from anywhere from $1,062 to $1,467. <clears throat> okay, so this is somewhat more sophisticated, um, and we won't worry too much about how we arrive at these numbers. Um, you may see the formulas in class, and they're quite complicated looking. Now, we're focused on uh, viewing this at, from a purely prediction um, perspective. Okay, so whether you just take get a point prediction or an interval, um, this should tell you that if we go to a thousand square feet, see there's a lot of variation here. So 
that's where this 1264 is coming from. And you know, obviously, because there's a lot of variation, that sometimes a thousand square foot apartments are rent for a little more, and sometimes they rent for a little less. This interval gives us boundaries on that kind of um, that that confidence level. That okay, so of, of 95 percent. So instead of saying one number, we get an interval. All right. So this was simple simple linear regression in a nutshell. There's a lot I kind of skim through that. So hopefully this will supplement what we talk about in class. All right. So till next time, have a great day.